Hi everyone, my name is Jan, I'm the technical advisor for the XSEC team and today I would like to talk to you about the 737's hydraulic systems and uh, if you want to you can get some technical diagram, there are many websites out there that uh, provide them and that would enable you to follow along a little better and um, to get a brief idea how long the movie is running I will start the clock that you can see on the very left hand side now it's also fully modeled we're quite proud of it I'm starting the elapsed timer and also starting the chronometer it starts running there and the main indications for the hydraulic system is um, on the center panel you can see it on this row on the right on the bottom the hydraulic quantity 99 98 percent also the pressure right now indicating zero and on the very right side you see the indication for the emergency brake cylinder it's at just over 3000 psi now up on the overhead panel the pump switches uh, engine and elec for both systems and on the very top left you can see the flight controls not powered right now because the hydraulics are off. Engines are running so we can also use the engine driven pumps and um, the first thing I'm going to show you now is I will deplete the emergency cylinder by pumping the brakes and uh, you can see the pressure is going down so now I have no hydraulic pressure no pressure from the emergency cylinder and that means the brakes don't work and if you watch closely look at the numbers of the runway you can see the plane is starting to move forward gently there's no way to stop it I could use the reverses of course but um, what I do now is I turn on the pumps again you can see the needles at the generator power draw twitch as the electrical pumps come on and I'll point that out again in a minute and I hit the brakes set the parking brake plane is safe for now okay um, what are we going to do now I'll show you how the elec pump turns on and off again and you can see the needle twitch elec uh, 2 is connected to generator 2 they're cross wired so in case of an engine failure you still have a full hydraulic system even though the engine driven pump isn't working and the generator of that engine isn't working but the other generator is powering the respective elec pump okay I'm going to extend the flaps now watch the hydraulic quantity and also the pressure dip as the hydraulic motor starts working and uh, yeah, you can see B system which is powering the flaps going down a little bit as the leading edge slats and flaps deploy you can see the quantity come down that's all done now to demonstrate the power of the engine driven pump I'm going to turn it off and let the elec pump do the work again now watch the power draw go up much higher this time because it's doing all the work by itself I'm uh, retracting the flaps now and you can see the generator 1 is providing power for the B elec pump and you can see the power or the uh, pressure dip much lower this time and also takes a lot longer to retract the flaps and the slats uh, because the elec pump again is not as strong as the engine driven pump so now it's all done you can see the pressure jump back up and um, I'm going to turn the pressure on again for the engine driven pump. Want to show you the auto brake system real quick, also fully modeled. Just uh, I'm going to arm it for the RTO mode, a little self test. The orange light extinguishes and it's dependent on B hydraulics as well. So when I turn off the B hydraulics, the auto brake will also fail. And you can see that little orange light is on. And of course, to get it back, I have to set the put the pressure back on then I can reset it and turn it back to RTO okay let's pretend now that uh, we have a problem in flight maybe a line ruptured or so we lost the B hydraulic fluid and um, we simulate that by turning off the B pumps so I'm panning back to the overhead panel turning off the B pumps and you can now see on the center panel that the pressure goes down auto brake disarmed again of course and there's no more pressure in hydraulic system B I get a master caution too that's because the pumps aren't running and not putting out pressure I cancel that by pushing the master caution push to reset button 
and I'm uh, also turning off the auto brake because I don't want any orange lights on in the cockpit. That's a uh, old habit. Now I extend the flaps to one, and uh, since the B hydraulics are powering the flaps, nothing happens. The lever is set to one, but there's no pressure to drive the flaps, and they just sit there. So what you would do in flight is, of course, you need to get the flaps out, and there's a way that Lufthansa and uh, Boeing, of course, provide it for that. Um, the first thing you do if the B hydraulics fail is you turn on the standby system. I grabbing the switch. See, I move it to off. The yaw damper jumps off. It was off before. It's dependent on B hydraulics, but uh, doesn't show until the flight control switch is moved from the on position. And um, I'm moving the flight control switch to standby rudder. You can see the low pressure light come on real short. That it's armed only when. It's commanded on, so this is a good sign for me to know that the standby system pump is working. Another way to turn on the standby hydraulic system is to use the alternate flaps switch when you move it to arm. Again, you will see the low pressure light come on real quick, turn off. And when I flip the guard closed, it turns off the switch, so now the pump isn't running anymore. And when I use that switch to turn it on, you can see again it starts running, low pressure light extinguishes. So now I have standby pressure. That is not what is used for the alternate flaps though. I'm using an electric motor and when I move it you can see the power draw from the generator 2 and if I toggle it to down real quick it opens a valve that will extend the leading edge slats and flaps and in this mode it will extend them all the way right away. It pushes them out so I have the full slats available and this little uh, button is spring loaded to off so if I would let it go it would stop so I'm holding it and you can see the flaps start to move. Of course it's an electric motor it's uh, not as strong as the uh, electric driven pump and it takes a long time to extend the flaps far enough to land. You would only do it to flaps 15 and land with flaps 15 in that case. And watch the uh, power draw from generator 2 and if I let it go it comes back down to about 50. Of course it uses a lot of power to run the flaps in this way, but at least you can get it out. Um, what uh, I will do now is I will go back up. Now it's uh, it stays in the up position. It's also the way in the real aircraft safety feature and um, I can let it go and you can see the flaps move back towards the up position and uh, but the leading edge flaps stay extended. There's no way to retract them in this mode you have to live with them being out in case you would divert after a go around or so they still stay out and you need a little more fuel about 10 percent more fuel flow to get to wherever you want to go you can see they're still fully extended now um what uh, we're doing now is we set the whole system back to normal i'm turning off the alternate flap system i'm putting the flight control back to on and I'm also putting the power back on. Now remember the flap lever was still at one of course immediately the flaps move to one again and the uh, leading edge flaps transit from the full extent position to the mid extent which is correct for flaps one and you can see it right there and um, not flying with this aircraft obviously something is really wrong so I'm ex putting the flaps back to up and um, call it a day. And that concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, see you the next time.